So since the last steel wool test, I've gotten a lot of feedback and I've gotten a lot of good advice. I really enjoy hearing what your experience is or what your thoughts are. So I'm going to do a second quick follow-up test. I'm going to take the residual from the black liquid that was left behind. It's all dried up. Put a little water in that. We'll loosen that up and I want to paint that on a pot. As well, I'm going to come back to this experiment here and I think I'm going to put it in a jar, put some water in it, mash it up, and then filter out all of the liquid. And similar to this one, we'll paint it on a pot, we'll see what color it is. But I have had two great suggestions. Several people said, why don't you put vinegar on it? Vinegar will make it rust. Well, of course, that's a good idea. Uh, and someone else said, hey, try hydrogen peroxide, which absolutely makes sense. I mean, after all, we're trying to get oxygen to bond with this, and hydrogen peroxide is definitely willing to give up its oxygen. So I'm just going to put the rest of this little bottle of hydrogen peroxide fully wet. And then I have white distilled vinegar. And as well, I think I'm going to let these soak. I think I'm going to mash them. I'm going to filter the liquid let it dry off and we're going to test these two along with the residuals of the previous test so we'll do that right now they look so similar that i better put a, a label on them I, I just caught myself smelling these to figure out the vinegar is quite strong but i don't want to keep coming back and smelling it so vinegar and hydrogen peroxide okay so i wanted to point something out that i think is interesting uh, really, probably not pertinent to uh, why we're not getting red rust, uh, but I noticed that, as you might expect, the steel wool is magnetic or is attracted to a magnet in its unfired form. But I noticed that after we fired it, uh, that it did not respond to a magnet. And I think that's because if you watch blacksmithing channels, uh, you'll hear uh, when they're heat treating their blades, uh, trying to change the crystalline structure of the iron. And there's at least three, but the three main ones they talk about are ferrite, martensite, and austenite. And of the three, austenite is non-magnetic, and you can make iron into austenite uh, by heating it really hot. I think 900 and, you could look it up, 900 and something degrees C. And uh, it will convert it to austenite, which is really brittle, which might also explain why it uh, pulverized so easily. But, so, kind of a tangent, but I thought that was interesting. Number two, uh, while I wait for these to be affected by the vinegar and by the hydrogen peroxide, it's just bugging me that it seems that every time I've used these, they instantly rust, and it I can't believe that they didn't rust and I thought, well, maybe, maybe these things are shipped with like a coating on the wire, maybe a, like a light mineral oil or something. They don't feel oily and they don't leave a residue, of course, but it would make sense that they would put something on it so that it wouldn't rust in storage and in shipping. So I have a bowl of soapy water, but this is a dishwashing detergent or dishwashing soap. So there, we're gonna let that sit around while we wait for the other two. And I want to see if this rusts easier. I'm not even going to spray it again. I just want to leave it. And I want to know if soaping it and cleaning it before you set it out makes any difference at all. Well, it looks like we have a winner, folks. The hydrogen peroxide definitely caused some rust. Although, uh, as expected, it did dry out really quickly. I didn't put more in. We have some red rust. But check out the vinegar. Interestingly, the vinegar, after probably four days, has still not dried out. I don't know why. Uh, it's almost as if it kind of creates a scum on the top that, that seals it. But, you know, our, my studio is really hot and uh, very dry. And I expected this to dry out just as quickly, but nope. I mean, it just completely dissolved it. So, that looks so much better than anything else I've done so far. I think that's a winner. Now we just got to get that out and clean it and concentrate it and we'll see what it does.
it's kind of settled in the bottom. So I might pour a good portion of the vinegar off, but I'm going to leave, I'm not going to rinse it. I want to leave the vinegar in. I want to see if the acidity has any effect on anything. So we're going to test this. I'm going to shoot a little bit of water in this. This is the black leftover water that dried up. And I'm going to put a little bit of water in the bottom of this, stir it around. And we're going to take those three. And I want to put some bands on this cup. Three colors. And we'll pour some clear on it. And we'll get to see what do they look like. Are they different? And what do they look like under glaze? First up, black water residue. All right. Next up, the red residue. Got some chunks in that. But it is a different color. I, I'm curious to see if that makes it through firing. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go back. Let's put a second one on this. I don't know if that's fair, but... Ooh, and some drips. It's actually a little more fun that way, I think. Okay, so I poured off most of the vinegar. We have some some liquid in there, but I'm going to stir up the slurry actually it does not feel chunky or gritty I mean, you there's there are definitely pieces in there but okay it does look almost like sandy a little bit but vinegar ooh a very different color I'm not sure if the camera's gonna pick it up but Well, there you go. Very cool. Let's see if any of that color difference makes it through the firing. So it would be nice to see how these react to a uh, glaze of some kind. So I have a clear I want to put on thin. It'll be a milky clear. So we'll get a test there. If for no other reason than symmetry. Then I'm going to take the rest of this and I'm going to take uh, whatever looks most promising and we're going to try to do the inside with the rest of it. So of these, I think that the most promising is the vinegar, at least of the three. I like this the best. Uh, actually, I like, the, I like them all. I like the red as well. But um, I think I'm going to put the rest of the glaze into here. We're going to mix it up. I'm going to run it through a coarse sieve to get rid of chunks and then we'll do the inside of our test cup. Well, you know what? Try again. Let's do it one more time. Oh, <laughs> it's going to be so thick. Well, we have drips over drips. I don't know. Put that in the kiln, see what happens. Well, here it is out of the kiln. Not surprisingly, uh, I put this on the thinnest. You can see where it was a little bit uh, uh, thicker, where I crossed the line. It's got two layers right here. It looks a little bit darker, but you can also see where I poured the clear over. The thin application of the rust almost disappeared. It is interesting effect, this middle bit here, you can see the black lines, that's clearly, well, it's not clearly, I believe this to be 
the little flecks of metal that I didn't fully sieve out. But what's surprising is how dark it did not disappear at all through the glaze when we used the vinegar rust. And yes, I, I think I probably put it on a little bit thicker. It felt like it was going on thicker, but I also think it's because that vinegar really broke down that pad. And so whatever natural liquid I was getting out of it after I sieved out the big parts, uh, probably was just denser, had more oxide in it. But it certainly came right through when you put a clear over it. And the inside... I don't know, it's kind of bumpy. I certainly don't think I'd be putting big chunks of iron oxide in something, but if we sieved it, it could be it could be an ingredient, something to work with. Anyways, there you go. The big winner, vinegar. Vinegar is the way to do it if you want to do this, and it doesn't take that long. So, thanks for your advice, and hope you enjoyed that.